And sometimes you might hear sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system. Just I use them interchangeably. Sympathetic division, at least for this class, is the same thing as a sympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic ner division, same thing as a parasympathetic nervous system, at least at this class. So yeah, I use them interchangeably. But the sympathetic division, notice that it has this arrangement right here. And again, you have all these roots going from the thoracic spinal nerves and then also a few roots from the lumbar spinal nerves. So that's why sometimes the sympathetic division is called the thoracolumbar division because it refers to the roots that supply and that, that lead to and from these areas. And when you hear the fight or flight response, this is what it means with that sympathetic division. So this is the anatomy of that system that carries all out those all those effects when you have that fight or flight response. This is the one that causes all those system-wide and body-wide effects you feel when you have that stress response in response to fight or flight. But actually, I think that now they say it's not just fight or flight, but sometimes people get fright or and notice that like sometimes people when they're in really stressful situations, they don't even fight or flight, they just freeze in place. They're so overwhelmed they don't do anything. So it's like not just fight or flight, that's the start, but also fright or freeze. So the sympathetic nervous system is also involved in the freezing response where someone just doesn't do anything altogether. So it's not necessarily just fight or flight. But they're all F's, so this is another way you can think of the F division. So what are the sympathetic responses? Well, you're encountering some sort of very intense situation. So you want to be more alert. It's like, oh, something intense is happening. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep. Well, maybe some people do that. But in a typical sympathetic response with stress, what do you want to be? You want to be, it's like, okay, I gotta be aware, aware or say it was like back in the caveman days and then you see a big saber toothed tiger and then it's menacing you. So where are you gonna be? Very alert, right? And then what's going to happen is you're also going to speed up your metabolism, especially in freeing up your energy stores, because why? It's going to be go time. It's, you're either going to fight this thing or you're going to fly or run away from it, and get, assuming that you're not the type that freezes in place. And so what you're going to do is like, it's not the time to store energy. It's now the time to use energy because you're either going to run away or you're going to fight something. You're going to do something about it. So you want a lot of energy to be mobilized in your bloodstream so you're able to get, carry out whatever you need to do. So you're also going to increase your respiration. And this is dovetailing with that whole part about muscle metabolism, right? So you want to run away from something. What do you need to generate a lot of ATP? Well, you can generate some ATP through lactic acid fermentation, but how do you generate even more ATP? Maybe you want to increase your amount of oxygen so you can do aerobic respiration, generate more ATP, so you're able to generate more, use more energy. And you're also going to increase your heart rate and blood pressure. So the big thing that's with the heart rate and blood pressure, it's going to increase your circulation. And by increasing the circulation of your blood, it's going to increase the rate at which oxygen and nutrients are delivered to your cells and also the way the rate of removing carbon dioxide and waste from your cells as well. You're also going to increase your sweat gland activity. So the thing with increased metabolism, increased units of energy reserves, all the physical activity is going to increase your body temperature. So you need a way to cool off. This is a homeostatic mechanism of cooling yourself off. You're going to increase your sweat glands so the water can absorb the heat and dissipate and then evaporate so that you cool off your core body temperature. And what? so when you're trying to run away from something or trying to fight something, do you want to go to the bathroom right there and then? So the thing is that it te the sympathetic response is like, okay, yeah, using the bathroom is very important, but this is not the time to digest that burrito. This is not the time to think about using the bathroom and just downtime on the toilet. So now it's like, okay, that's important, but let's put, put a brakes on it. Let's shelve that and table it for later. So it looks, sounds like this, and this is the thing with the sympathetic nervous system and or sympathetic division is that a lot of times people think, oh, it's a negative thing because it's fight or flight. This is an intense situation. What other also increases their sympathetic response is exercise. And notice that all of these involve are increase when you're actually actively exercising. So this on the note of exercise, what letter does exercise start, stand for? It stands for E, right? So 
Exercise is a classic thing that increases sympathetic activity, same with excitement, so it's not necessarily just stress. Exciting things, like if something gets you really thrilled and amped, like riding a roller coaster, your sympathetic nervous system is definitely going to kick in. Emergencies, well, yeah, that can be stressful. That's definitely stressful. And embarrassment as well. So all of these involve, I mean, sometimes, you, I don't know if this term is still in use. It's been a while since I took in psychology, but there, there was like distress and use stress. And you have like stress that's associated with positive emotion with the, the use stress. And then distress is the type of stress we typically associate with negative situations and feelings. And this is another way I remember it is like if you look at the anatomy, at least of the chain ganglia, it looks like there's a bunch of E's. So I did like to draw a bunch of E's like this is like an E here and these are E's reflected. So this is the way I like to think of it. Sometimes this isn't an official name for it, but this is one way you can think of what are things that typically activate the sympathetic division. So this is why sometimes it's nicknamed the E division. Now, how about the other one that works with the sympathetic nervous system? So we have the parasympathetic nervous system or, system or division, also known as the cranial sacral division. So why? Because you have all these cranial nerve roots here. Not all of them, but you have several of them. And then you have some of the sacral roots over here. So put those together and you have cranial sacral division. Now this is also nicknamed the rest and digest response. And notice that you have a lot of your digestive organs, but it's not just digestive organs. You also have other organs here as well, like your heart and lungs and your kidney and bladder and your reproductive organs as well. Now, so this is also why sometimes it's called the feed and breed, especially with regard to the reproductive organs over here. So that's why we have the parasympathetic. So basically things that are more with like the downtime and relaxation. 